I was in college and I had just started dating this girl. Like one night I, I was out and it was like a group of my friends <clears throat> and my cousin at the time. I had to get back, I had like practice early in the morning so I didn't stay out all night. So I told the girl, I was like, oh, come back when you, come by my house when you leave the bar. Woke up in the morning, she didn't come by. I was like, oh, fuck, that's weird. I called her, she didn't answer. My friends told me, they're like, Aaron went home uh, with your cousin last night. And I was like, really? I was like, that's weird. So then I, right away I asked him, I was like, yo, did you go home with Aaron? He's like, yeah, I did, but nothing happened. She just slept over just cause uh, she couldn't drive home. And then, I was like, dude, I 100% do not care. I don't like this girl, not even a little bit. I just hooked up with her a few times. I was like, I don't care. Just tell me because I don't want to look stupid. I was like, just tell me. I definitely don't care. Like, I emphasize it so many times. He's like, I swear to God, nothing happened. I swear to God. Then, like, years went by. Like, two or three years went by. And somehow I found out. Um, We're back. Zane recorded. Forgot to record the uh, the intro or whatever i don't know what he's doing over there obviously not his job but we're back with another episode and i'm excited because we just got zane approved to have an extra ticket for the fights this weekend at ufc long island so the whole squad's rolling in deep repping btb btb at the U B S btb at UBS. UBS Arena. Yeah. So the whole squad will be there. Zane, are you hyped or do you not want to hang out Let's with us? Let's go, bro. Cancer season. I feel like Zane never wants to hang out this with us. This is like us. a work trip for Zane. It's not like I'm going to the fights with my friends. This is. I'm not even I sure. I have if to go to the fucking work or UFC fights with these losers. You guys realize like you guys are like my only friends. <laughs> he, Stop he, it. He always wants to hang out with his, uh, his, his co communist college buddies. Those are your real friends. I have not talked, spoken to anyone from college since the summer began. That was like last week. Yeah, it was like it's like week. two months ago at this point. Zane's going to be like, something's either going to come up and he's not going to be able to come. I'm sick. I know we said it, so you're never going to believe me, but, but I'm sick. I think I have staff. I think I, ate, I have staff. I, think I, I, I got staff. I ate a banana. <laughs> Unless like a MILF hits me up, I'm, I'm going. 100%. There'll be MILFs there. That's the whole point. That's where we got to right. go. What are you going to wear? You got to have a fun outfit. Uh, Whatever you want me to wear. Get, send me dress code, bro. We'll figure it out. We'll talk in a group chat. Maybe I have to give you a t-shirt, a cool t-shirt. Like, co cool you could dress like me. You'd wear just jeans and a cool t-shirt and cool give you a chain. A chain. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. We both have like John Varvato shirt with a chain. Oh just my rocking. God. Kyle and Mitty Kyle. <laughs> I'll buzz my head. That'd be fun. Oh my God. You took French in high school? I did. How many, how many levels? The whole time. I, I took AP French. I took French in college too. Oh like, my god! I we should do a whole a... podcast of you guys speaking in French. I oh, I'd have a hard time. I see the entire time. <laughs> the only reason I took French was because I didn't. Like, I remember you had to send in your pick, pick French or Spanish, and I didn't send mine in on time. So then I got put into French. Yeah, if you didn't do it early enough, then they put yeah. you in like the French. We had like Spanish, French, and then German. German. Most schools don't have German. Yeah, that's like there's only a few people. Isn't Gregor's? Gre Gregor's mom's a German teacher. German teacher. He I... speaks German that's, or understands it. That's wild. Yeah. Fun fact. Oh, Zane. Um, what do you know about what's happening in Sri Lanka right now? Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, okay. I think I I know a little bit. If we're if this is what I think it is. What. Is it about like all the Muslim people? No. So in Sri Lanka, they just, you know how like they stormed the capital on January 6th yeah. in this country? So Sri Lanka has a king. So they like stormed the kingdom and they overtook the whole thing. And now like there's millions of people like in the kingdom and like swimming in the pool and like sleeping and it's bad. And the guy ran out. He resigned, left because the entire country is now bankrupt. Really? So they're just, it's like a... I don't know if it's even still a country, but it was completely overrun. Speaking of like political things happening right now, did you hear what happened in Japan? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, prime minister. Yeah, I saw that. The foreign, foreign prime, former prime minister. Former right? prime minister. Yeah, I saw that. It's so funny that you guys. This is like the political like knowledge, like things that you know about this week, and I only know about like Hunter Biden and yelling at a hooker while he's weighing out his crack. Oh yeah, that was that's big in the news too. <laughs> He's doing crack again. Well, his, no, his, it was like they just leaked his, his old iPhone video. Got, his iCloud uh, got hacked and all the videos and stuff, and they're like, 
posting it out. So I saw a couple of videos. It's so super weird though, because like a big video is him like in a like disgusting hotel room with a hooker, which is fine. Like he's not the president; he's just mm-hmm. president's son. That's fine. But who videotapes like that. a drug deal? Yeah, and he like, has. Why a would lot you want to have footage of like weighing out cocaine? Yeah, like all like, he has all the pictures and the videos that came out before. It's so, such a strange thing. Like, why would you? ever want to do that yeah. like i get like videotaping like sex stuff or yeah. something You're like oh this is hot. i'll watch this but like yeah. videotape a drug deal where's the upside to that he you know it's funny he always reminds you he, like when i see those videos he always has a cigarette and it's like hanging out of his mm-hmm. mouth where he talks and it reminds me of um our boat mechanic i was just gonna say that he yeah. literally reminds him <laughs> where you know like it's almost like a cartoon when people have the cigarette hanging from their mouth and they never touch it and they talk with it in their mouth and it just kind of like looks like it's stuck to their bottom lip yeah he does that our boat mechanic does that yeah, they but don't he's also to like a cigarette. Just sticks. I also the... think he's a drug addict, so it must be something yeah. like that. So, some yeah, so some interesting politics. This is like Sri most... Lanka. I only know of because of the Nicki Minaj song. Sri Lanka is a small island off the coast of India, mm-hmm. and it was formerly called Ceylon. Cool. I don't know any Sri Lankan people. Well, actually, I think they beef with me. Beef. They have beef with me. Oh, really? Yeah, because they got affected when partition happened. How so? When, like India and Pakistan split off because mm-hmm. they were just getting like an influx of people from like India. Well, that country has not done well <clears throat> since. No, probably no, definitely well, not. Well, now it's not really. They're bankrupt. Do you think we could take it over for the 500 subscriber special? Mm, wait, what? We could just take over the kingdom. <laughs> like it's free. no, they need more than that. But they like, successfully overtook a kingdom. Like our when uh, our country, they went in there and just kind of like took stupid pictures i feel like they just took selfies for like 10 minutes yeah Yeah. which i mean if you're gonna do something as wild as that you you should be successful yeah imagine kyle as a dictator (laughs) (laughs) why everybody needs five minutes on the beach every day at least we People brought, would be a lot cooler. If they, they would did. be a lot cooler. Yeah. I brought Pablo to the beach last night, which you're not really supposed to bring dogs there, but I brought him. And whenever he walks on the sand, they always tell him, Pablo, this is part of your culture. You have to understand this. Yeah. Because spending time, you know, that's, that's really part of like, it's such a big part of our life. It's just spending like, time together? No, the beach. Oh, the beach. Yeah. 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 So I explained that to the dog. But uh, so we were at the beach and, um, it was our first weekend at Gilgo Beach, like almost like the whole summer or since school let out because we've been in Long Beach Island most of the summer um, and the weekends anyway. So it was the first time we were around like a super crowded Long Island Beach in the summer and we were like kind of feeling very uh, introspective, if you will. And all of these people around us were like sounding so... <laughs> insane like there's this one mother and she was screaming at her children she's like nicolette adriana stay out of the water i heard there's a shark in the water so like they're telling their kids like i heard that like on the news the news always reports like possible shark attacks and be like i heard that there's a shark in the water around here so you have to stay out of the water and she's telling her like Like, talking about like one shark and these were like Three, these, the Nicoletta, Francesca, and uh, Adriana. Adriana were all about like three or four years old. So they're not going in the water. And she's telling them, she's like, there's a shark in the water. Don't go in there. So when, when you say that there's a shark in the water, like that's like the most insane thing you could possibly say because there's thousands of sharks in the water, like tens of thousands, mm-hmm. like everywhere. It's all just, the ocean is just like yeah. shark soup. Yeah. So many sharks, but then people like that it's, watch the news on Long Island are like, yeah, they hired extra police for shark patrol and they'll hire like cops. How are people to come getting in on paid overtime for that? And your shark patrol, there's helicopters. Like, there's what are a, they going to do? Arrest well, we that saw, shark? We saw it earlier in the week. It was uh, on the news. It was someone got bit by, possibly by a shark. Yeah. And it was on. Fox News just like talk, possibly got bit by a shark. They had helico- we don't watch Fox News. It was just on. Yeah, the they had um helicopters, helicopters searching. They had uh like people look like cops with shark enforcement, shark oh, patrol, shark patrol. Sorry, mm-hmm. on um on the back of their shirts. And I'm like, well, 
of course there are sharks in there. It's the ocean. Like, I don't understand. I, I, for some reason, I really don't understand when people are like, go to the beach and they, they're like, well, I don't go in the water because I'm afraid of sharks. I'm like, I mean, I get that. Maybe. But to say you're afraid of like the, you heard that there's one shark. There. So you're not going in that day. Yeah. Like if you like a general fear of the ocean and have an understanding that there's thousands of sharks there, I could say mm-hmm. that's a reasonable fear. It's yeah. kind of like crazy to me, but it's like makes sense because you understand like how many there are. Mm-hmm. But people who watch the news and they say, I heard that there's a shark here yeah. on the news. That's like ridiculous. They're, they're not very bright. Yeah. So we were sitting on the beach and like the whole crew that came after us were sitting right behind us, like kind of right on top of us. And then we're close to the water. So then the daughters are in the like playing near the water with their feet in it. So they bring some chairs up there. So we're basically in the middle of them. We're sandwiched in between them. And they were just like screaming the whole time. Like, oh, my God, let me take a picture. Smoking cigarettes. Smoke, smoking cigarettes. Like, girls, get together, take a picture. And they're like, say happy birthday. And I'm like, they didn't even get in the water. You just got here. And like, the moms are already like, stand together, get a picture, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you just got here. Like, let them play first. And it was just like, then we were like, okay, they keep the kids keep running back and forth and the parents keep the moms keep like yelling. So we're like, okay, like let's just move a little. Cause like we can't even hear each other talk. So like, then it's awkward. We get up and we move and they're like looking at us and I'm like, and they're like, Oh, sorry. And we're like, no, no, no. And at the same time, Kyle, like we both said something different. I was like, no, we wanted to move close to the water. And Kyle's like, what did you, you said something? I said, oh, we felt like we were in between. It's easier for you guys. Give yourself, give you a little more space. Yeah. And so we both said something different. And they're like, huh? And we're like, no, no, that's fine. And they like, were like offended that we. Yeah. They thought it was like rude that we left. But like we weren't like ugh, making faces or yeah. anything, but we just wanted to. They were literally screaming and smoking cigarettes like all around us. So I was like, oh, let's just move over a little. They were like throwback people too, like like the husbands had like tribal tattoos. Yeah. And she had like like a early 2000 Mm. like tramp stamp. Yeah. I don't know if that's what you call it, but uh, just above the butt. And it's like like throwback people. Mm -hmm. That's what I call them. Yeah. They look like they came out of like 2002. Mm hmm. You know, like a long baggy bathing suit on the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a funny look. A lot of makeup on the girls, but they're, it's like, wait, you're at the beach. So, and then we're like completely like surrounded by people that were just annoying us. And then we thought to ourselves, well, to each other, why do we live here? <laughs> <laughs> we're really feeling like, why do we live here? It doesn't even make sense. We don't have any family here. So we were like convinced ourselves that well no this is what i should like move to austin or we have a lot of friends in austin we should move there and by the end of the conversation we're like yeah we're gonna move to austin Mm -hmm. we're like it was as we'll figure it out we're gonna move to austin after this yeah like don't know like how soon but we'll we'll, we gotta start figuring out the logistics of it because the only thing is if you're not from long island i don't think you really understand and i understood but i don't really understand until like i've lived here for a few years Everyone pretty much is born and raised here. Mm -hmm. And even though it's so populated and there's so many people, it's like the most insane traffic. And it's just crazy. It still has the small town feel like. Well, it's like a conglomerate of small towns. Yeah, because both of us grew up from small towns and you know what I mean? So we kind of know what that's like. And I'm like, oh, it's the same exact thing. It's just louder people that drink and smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same thing. I Less heroin, but like louder talking well i don't know less i don't know where i grew up i feel like everyone's on heroin oh yeah oh my like everyone like dies all the time per capita it's probably more there yeah but overall it's probably more well yeah but per capita yeah yeah but uh but yeah i don't know and then i was just kind of like it's so weird that we live here like everyone i don't know like we don't have like a whole lot of friends here but it's weird because like everyone is kind of the same and everyone knows each other and everyone has like the gossip from like their their family gossip their school gossip from Mm -hmm. the time that they're you know little to all the way growing up and everything and so many like christenings and birthday parties and like my aunt's sister's daughter's having a baby shower and it's just like that's what every weekend consists of and we're we kind of don't really fit in 
And no. so we were like, wait, like, I don't know. We don't really fit in here. Like, why are we here? This is so weird. And we're like, we should move somewhere. Maybe like, you know, to us not growing up here, we thought that Long Island was like a city, which it feels like that when you're from smaller towns. Mm. But then when you come, you're like, it's the same vibe, just more people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, maybe it's different if you live in a city where most people aren't born and raised there. And then you kind of can, it's easier to like meet other people yes. and like, cause they're not going to like their second cousin's first communion. Yeah. You know, they're out doing stuff. Right. Yeah. And I just think that it would be like easier for like us to meet more like interesting people or just different things. And whereas here, it kind of seems like it's not as easy. It sounds like I'm like talking shit. I, first of all, I love long Island. And yeah. No, been- cause the, the point of the story is then we like snapped out of it. We're like, Oh wait, no, we have a sick life. We go yeah. to the beach and we have a nice house exactly where we want and everything. We do what we want. We don't really but- like, yeah. Then we were walking out to the beach and we had already overcome. We were like, all right, we're not going to move to Austin. But we saw the, like that same trashy lady at the bar. Like she had like a, like a bud heavy in one hand, a cigarette in the other. And she's like in her bikini <laughs> where no daughters in sight. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, this is like the trashiest lady ever. And you're like, oh, my God. She almost got us to move to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> she literally did. It was she's so, so trashy. We almost moved. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really fun. But I think we're going to stay here for a while. Yeah, we'll be here. Yeah. The only thing is, like, I would love to move to Austin. No beach. No beach. It's tough. Yeah. If we, if. And I, every time, like, our friends that live there, they're like, you should come. We're like, yeah, but there's no beach. They go, there's a lake. Yeah. Whenever my friends in Austin are trying to get us there, they always say, well, there's not an ocean, but there's like rivers and lakes here. You could bring your boat. I'm not a lake guy, man. Cause a lake, you can't, it's like a lot of like, branches and like seeds i don't want my feet touching and like, i don't want my feet touching like rocks yeah i don't want my i don't want my feet on the bottom touching rocks or even worse like like rocks with like moss Ooh. like yeah. moss no i don't want my feet touching that at all because like a lake feels more like nature like i don't really care for nature i only mm-hmm. like like the beach and the ocean well yeah i always say i don't like like mosquitoes and snakes mm-hmm that's what I picture in like snakes a lake. and like reptiles or something mm-hmm. like that type. Not for me. No, not for me. Um, but yeah, so that but was you know, fun. I would fuck up some um, Mexican food. Yeah. So. Well, mostly I think that's more like barbecue. No, I think like everywhere right. in Texas, they have like Tex-Mex. Oh, okay. We have but like Austin's for- really well known for barbecue. Yeah. Which Barbe- I don't really love to be honest. I mean, I think barbecue is like a once i mean we don't have it once a year but that's like you can't really have them more than once a year no i think you can really yeah yeah i'm thinking like sloppy barbecue wings no they don't eat like it's like pulled pork brisket things like yeah. that. yeah i like that but i'm not eating that like as is that replacing pizza do you think for their people that's like their pizza i don't really know hmm it's not, yeah, it's not like a grab a quick slice, grab a quick brisket sandwich. That sounds a little heavy. Yeah. But maybe. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, and what, uh, we got into Frisbee. Super into Frisbee. Yeah. Zane, do you, do you, have you ever done a Frisbee? So the last done a Frisbee? time, the last time I played Frisbee was when I was four <laughs> and I was in the park and I was making friends with like a bunch of kids that I didn't know. I was in Eisenhower Park actually. And, I don't uh, know where that is. It's like in, in it Hempstead, yeah. Oh. And like, it's a bunch of like, a bunch of kids in their family. They're like, oh, like, do you want to play frisbee with us? And I was like, yeah, I've never played before, but I'd like to try. And they're like, so when I throw the frisbee, just try to catch it with your hands. And he throws the frisbee, and it hits me just right in the eye. Did you cry? I cried, and I ran away. Oh my god, so embarrassing. I went to my grandpa, and I asked, and I asked him to help me make me feel better. And then I went back <laughs> after, and I was like. Hey, can I play frisbee with you guys again? And the kids were like, "No, you tattle told on us." Oh, oh my god! <laughs> and so That's I haven't sad. played frisbee. And you haven't played since. Yeah. So you probably suck at throwing a frisbee then. I suck at throwing anything. I can't throw a football, a baseball, really anything. Yeah. Huh. If it involves balls, I'm not good at it. Yeah, that, I'm not really that good, at, but I am good at frisbee. Yeah, you are. Frisbee's totally different though. I'm really good. Yeah, you are. It's kind of. I wonder what. It's probably your second best sport. Well, I guess unless you count like. Jiu Jitsu. No, no the, and that's, it's martial arts. Yeah. That's all one. Yeah, it's definitely your second best sport. Yeah. Right? Um, that or yoga. 
Uh, well, I don't think yoga is a sport, really. I guess frisbee is not really a sport either, but. <laughs> and yeah, we don't play. Like, I wouldn't play ultimate frisbee where all that I just want to just throw with you. Yeah. Pass exactly. back and forth. So, um, on this one podcast I listen to, it's like one of my favorite podcasts. It's uh, my buddy Marco Prazo and Tim Carpenter. It's called the Ninja Rob Podcast. Really good. They always have a segment on it called Unpack That. And it'll be like a quote or something like that. And they give their interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. So today, and I, I always like that part of their podcast. I hope this isn't like real deep. Am I going to be able no, to understand No, today I, I follow a lot of like those business pages mm. and stuff on Instagram. So I saw this and I've seen similar things like this before, but it says a Mercedes isn't a symbol of success if you drive it to a job you hate. Few will understand this. How do you feel about that? I come from a super Indian family. Okay. So, like, I feel like in the beginning, it's like, I've, I've heard this quote before as well. And um, I recently, like, in my life, like, when I, like, I dated someone and they were like, oh, like, men try to, like, make their passion their work like all the time and it can be like unrealistic at points okay and she also comes from like uh she also came from like a super like asian background mm-hmm. okay so, like i have like the super like like uh eastern like like asian view on this where it's like as long as you're making money like i'm fine doing whatever mm-hmm. like even if you hate it even if you hate it because i have things i like i like to do and if this thing that i hate can help me do the things that i love to do i'm fine with it zane i want to give you a hug right now I feel the exact same way. Oh, and I think it's a very, like like you said, it's a very American thing to say, like, you have to do what you're path- passionate about or you have to do what makes you happy. Yeah. I feel that there has to be a separation between happiness and work. But unless you're, like, a professional athlete and, you know, there's a few unique jobs like that or some type of entertainer and you're doing exactly what you love. But most jobs, you try to do... Like most jobs you're going to have suck, Mm -hmm. but if you are fortunate enough to have one that pays good money, you just grind it out and then it gives you, you know, money to do the things that make you happy to have fun outside of work. But what you said, like, I guess if that's an Asian or whatever Eastern philosophy, that's exactly how I feel. The idea of just working, like doing something you love and not worrying about how much money you have. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't get that. I I don't agree with that. But the thing that I thought about this quote was a Mercedes is not a sign, a symbol of success. Even if you believe that no car to me, I'm never like, Oh, that guy must be successful. Like any loser could finance a Mercedes, whether you have a good job or not. Of course. Or they could be driving someone else's. If you make $600 a month, you could finance a Mercedes. Of course. You know, Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, so you you unpack that. No. OK, so it's hard for me to I feel like to give my opinion because I am a professional athlete and I do what I love. And, you know, when I was six years old, I was obsessed with karate and I that's what I wanted to do all the time. And essentially, that's what I'm doing now, making a living off of that. So it's I kind of feel like it's hypocritical for me to say what I think just because I haven't been there. And it's probably like easier said than done. Um But yeah, I think that sometimes people are always, especially people my age and a little bit younger, they, it's kind of become the whole thing. Like, I don't want to conform to a nine to five. Um, I just want to be happy. My happiness is more important. And I was like, yeah, but you, you gotta work. You need money. And like, how are you gonna like have a family and have kids and support them? And if you don't make money, you know what I mean? I think a lot of times that whole philosophy of, you know, doing what you love and being ha- and how important happiness is when it comes to your job is so blown out of proportion that now, like, it's just an excuse for being lazy. Yeah, it, it, it is. Because I think. It, and it, it almost like empowers laziness. But, well, at least you're not doing a job you hate. I mean, I you listen. Know, sure, you don't have a car or your own house, but at least you're not some sucker who's paying 30 five percent in taxes and yes going all day wearing a suit to work i like, think it's oh, become like not that bad. it's become a trend that really is just an excuse for laziness and empowers laziness mm-hmm. yeah. more than excuse i mean 
you know, you guys all know we all train jujitsu. Like as much as I love jujitsu and I love everyone I train with jujitsu, most of them are like, not most, a lot. I would, I wouldn't say most, like a lot of them are very lazy and they're just like, Oh, I just want to train jujitsu all day. I'm like, well, you're like 30 years old and still live at your mom's and don't have any job. Like you still maybe should be a little concerned, not saying you have to, maybe at some point you have to get a job and can only train jujitsu once a day instead of twice a day sometimes and waking up at like 10 30 or 10 30 in the morning yeah and just like smoking weed all day and hanging out like you know what i mean i just think and what you said like, as long as you're doing a job even if you hate it that does suck if you should try to find something you like but i think you can make happiness with who you surround yourself with and things you do your so, relationships is one of the most is the most important so if you're like you know, I'm talking about people that are a little bit older and they're, you know, married and, you know, we even have kids or not have kids. But if you are married to someone that's like, OK, or like you, you love them, but you're not like super like obsessed and overwhelmed with happiness. So you hate your job and then you're not really that excited to come home. That's a bigger problem. Then it's like, well, now it snowballs. And then it's like, well, I have to love my job. It's like, well, yeah, I think you should focus on yourself and finding a, a partner that you like or finding if you're younger finding friends or finding a hobby which is essentially mm. focusing on yourself so then i think that would make the job if you're not obsessed with it i think that would make it easier because you're it like gives you a higher threshold of misery mm -hmm. if eight hours of my day are gonna suck because i'm at a job i hate i know that you know what is it 12 uh you know the rest of the day 16 hours a day yeah. at home will be amazing yeah right so it gives you a higher threshold whereas if your home life sucks and your job sucks then you're definitely in a bad spot yeah i think that's when it's like you but know there i other than like you said like professional athlete entertainer there's like yesterday we are we have vacation rentals luxury vacation rentals and it sounds like, oh, it's a beautiful house and people rent it and you make good money and, oh, it's so and easy. that's it. But really what that means is we're like going there on like a 90 degree day in the summer and like dragging garbage out and cleaning every little thing. We, we have a cleaning staff, but every little thing in the backyard picking like little teeny tiny pieces of like mm -hmm. confetti out of the grass because people are going to criticize you on it mm -hmm. and like you're sweating and we're filthy and stuff like i don't i don't love doing that because mm -mm. that you feel like you're like a janitor and you're driving you two and money. a half hours to do it yeah right but you know but once that's your job yeah that's what you have to do yeah you know and for me i think of it and like we said this yesterday like like sometimes we don't always go together but we went there yesterday and we did it together and even just being like we got there 30 minutes early. I'm like, oh, let's go get coffee. And we sat outside and, and had coffee. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so much fun when we come together. Like, you know, so it is kind of, you know, the job itself isn't like, oh, my God, I love this. I'm so passionate about it. But it's what we do to make money. And like sometimes if I go and you can't, you're always like, oh, thanks for doing it. I feel bad because you did it by yourself. I'm like, what do you mean? This is my like this is our job. That's what we do. Like. It's not that that big of a deal, but some people be like, oh, it's because there's nothing like luxurious about running a place like that. Yeah, nothing it's like luxurious to stay at a place like mm -hmm. that. But you, the, the like you're like scraping like barbecue sauce off a grill in mm -hmm. 90 degree heat, mm -hmm. you know, just for someone to come back and say, like, the grill is kind of dirty. Yeah. So I guess so. Growing up in your uh, family, Zane, that that's like preach like, well, you're going to be a computer programmer or a doctor like that doesn't matter what you want to do uh it's more like just i mean it's like very heavily implied like my because uh, it's all about providing a better life for your family right well it's like my parents sacrificed like their lives mm. to come here and so like I, that's also like i feel like it's like kind of like my duty it's like oh like they came here like at the very least like i shouldn't be like a like a fuck up like i need to like get a job and like be able to like support myself at the very least mm -hmm. because of your, your your parents yeah yeah they work super hard but of see course. that's like yeah. such a i think like a non-american way of thinking like you have uh, even like you're super young and you still have like respect for the hard work your parents did where i don't think 
that many people in America like are like, oh, I really res- like want to do this to make my parents proud. You know what right. I mean? I think they're just like, oh, my parents are making me get a job. It sucks. Like, you know what I mean? They just see. And a lot of times, like, like you said, certain jobs, like being a professional athlete is something you like. So I think that now. There's kids, plenty of examples. There yes, are lots no, of no, people no. who do it, but there's nothing wrong with right, but, going to a job you hate. Yeah. But I think kids now are like, oh, I want to do something I like. I like jujitsu or I like MMA, so I'm going to do that. Well, you're not good. You might be good at like locally, but you have to be so good to make, not so good to go professional, to make a living for years and years. And then even that isn't enough. Like, you know, that ends one day and you have to be smart with saving your money, investing your money and thinking about what you want to do after so like you see a lot with social media just because you like watching like going on TikTok and you like watching YouTube videos then they're like well I'm going to start a YouTube page and that's cool if you want but they're like that's going to be my thing and I'm like well just cuz you like it and you like consuming it doesn't mean you're good at that you, there's more that goes into it than just like those people you know the biggest criticism is like oh you just make like dancing TikTok videos no they're like creating like brand deals oh, yeah. they're like super creative and they're super, talented. super they edit super creative but people are just like oh i just want to like live my life and you know it's like well if you become s- exceptional at something then yeah you could have potential at yeah. doing it. but you know some people are naive enough to th- say like well 99 percent of people will never make it like 99 percent. i hate when people say that like 99 percent of people won't be professional athletes like that's ridiculous. That means one in a hundred is a professional mm-hmm. athlete, and by professional athlete, I mean like really like pay for your yes. life. Yes, not it's like, like professional. It's like more like, I mean, the UFC, a professional fighter. There's like seven hundred people on the roster. There's like eight and a half billion people on Earth. Yeah, like it's way. It's not even mm-hmm. close to one percent. Yeah, but I mean, granted, there's other sports, but it's just a fraction of a percent. Well, I see it in MMA, like so many people are like, oh, I'm a professional MMA fighter. I'm like, are you? Mm, you're like one in three and you make like $300 a fight. You're not a professional fighter. Technically on paper, if you want to put that on, like if you want to put that in your Instagram bio, because mm-hmm. it de- technically is. Yeah. But like you, if you're like, you know, late 20s and you are have a losing record and you're not very good, like. You got to get a job. I think so. You know, unless you come, unless like your parents just pay for your, you know, pay for you to do whatever you want and you. No, so that's a totally different situation. That's a totally different situation. Those people are amazing too. Yeah. They're lucky enough to be in a position, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. I mean, anyone would do that. Of course. But yeah, I don't think you have to like necessarily. I was actually talking about a. uh, One of my friends, like someone that we know, they're like always, you know, I'm. 33 so she's our age and she's always like changing careers never really has like a real job and it's fine when you're like out of college and figuring it out but then it's like every once in a while I'm like oh what's she doing that it's like oh she's taking her test she's really into fitness working out so then she's taking her personal training test and then she did that and then she said recently she's like yeah I'm just not really passionate about it so I just don't want to do it she goes I don't know I just can't really find what I like I'm still trying to figure it out I she's like I find something I like and I'm obsessed with it but then after like two years I'm just kind of over it I just have no idea what I want to do well like you got you gotta get a job girl like you're Almost 35. Like you're, you're not going to find something that you want to do, someone in that position mm-hmm. or something you really love. But you definitely could find someone who you want to spend the rest of your life with mm-hmm. and be, you know, careful at selecting that. And then that's going to really help your life. Yeah. Don't worry about finding some job that you're obsessed with. I really when I see quotes like that, it like irritates me. Yeah. But and who cares? Who's like thinks a mercedes is successful any car right yeah i'm like it's right. so you could drive a ferrari i mean he could be successful or he could just be really irresponsible yeah or it's like he likes right? car i don't know i yeah. don't i'm not a car person so i don't really get that i i don't care about cars at all yeah nothing like i don't even want one yeah so yeah. weird it's um, weird that people are like when you're in high school and stuff like 
material things are such a big deal. Like, I don't know where this is where we're going to age ourselves here with using, but Abercrombie and like when we were, that was like the coolest thing to wear mm. the, to have that moose on your polo shirt. You were like cool. Oh, and yeah. if you didn't have it and I think, um, Hollister was like a little bit cheaper. They had like the, the seagull or whatever. And there was the, like Aeropostel below that. That's Aeropost- like, I used to get Aeropostel. Yeah. And it was like such a big deal. I was like, Oh, you got the moose on. And like, it's so funny. Like that was such a big deal. And it's like, it's so lame, but a lot of like to me, I'm like, when, when you get older, you go past that. Like, all right, who, who cares? A shirt? Cause you could have one of those shirts and doesn't really, you know, first of all, everyone in the school had it. So why would you want it? Right. But I think that that's such like a, a kid thing where you're getting like bullied, like, Oh, you're wearing that. But, and, but I realize a lot of people when they get older, they don't grow out of that phase. Where they still, they could be, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old and they're still like chasing material things because. It's still making like flexing on Instagram. About yeah. Like- and it's different. Listen, if you're real, there are some people that are like just, hey, I'm really into fashion. I really love this. And that's cool. But then there are people that are like, just, I'm like, just getting that or don't, can't really afford it and we'll just spend the money on it just to like flex it. And it's like, it's so weird that people don't grow out of that. Like, don't, I feel like that's just all stems from insecurity and just trying to like prove that you're something else. Well, you always say you, you say that all the time. Like a lot, most problems stem from insecurity. Yeah. I think like most, for most people, like if the insecurity is like the evil, you know what I mean? I I guess everyone goes through phases and different times of their life where they are insecure, whether it's just, your financial situation or physical appearance or because then you try to overcompensate for Mm -hmm. things like if you're insecure about like not making a lot of money those people usually spend a lot of money yes like the uh, to show like no see i'm not broke yeah but you know and i just think that's like like people that are and i don't know how it is like i feel like when you see kids that are like insecure it's like you gotta really really i don't know how but you have to really teach kids to to have like self-confidence and I don't know how you do that, but I think that that's like, I mean, for me, I'm like super confident. I wasn't always like that. When you, I think when you're in like middle school and high school, you know what I mean? That's like, yeah, you really are super confident. Like I don't care what anyone thinks no. like at all. Like I don't, and I just, and when I see like you, you like, we'll ask like the ice cream guy for his phone number so you could text them. Then you'll drive the ice cream truck to the house. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, we wouldn't do that. But then they're like, oh, Caitlin, can you text the ice cream man? I'm like, yeah, of course. But like with that, I'm just like, well, who cares? Like, I don't know. I feel like, like, who cares? But I see like so many people. I'm like, they're yeah, like you don't care. No. No. And I can't believe people do. Yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of that, too, is uh, just is honestly from training martial arts that I that helped with confidence. Well, and you've been super successful at that too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think I guess the more success I got with that, the more confident I got. But I was always like, like if you were like just into martial arts and you just trained jujitsu and you were like, you know, not very good, but yeah. But when I was a kid, I would get like made fun of all the time for doing karate. Yeah, but now you make like a ton of money doing something, and you're like, you know, have yeah. some degree of fame. Mm-hmm. And that obviously lends to being confident, right? Yeah. But I guess probably you have probably had confidence prior to that, though. Otherwise, I did, but definitely not as much as now. I think just as you get older, maybe I think the having success and getting older, I feel like I just, you know, boosted my confidence. Right. But I just I don't even think it's confidence. Just I don't care what anyone thinks. No, you don't. I only like I care like what you think and my family, and that's it. Like I don't really care what anyone thinks, even if it's like you know maybe that's not good like yeah no you, you, sometimes, you definitely don't yeah yeah that's good did i tell you guys i worked at hollister no <laughs> i We're- found out my ex-girlfriend cheated on me in my last shift <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah stop where is it a mall yeah garden state plaza uh willowbrook mall okay yeah should damn I, should i go into the story? sure go ahead zane yeah um this is back when i was really chubby too you were chubby working at Hollister? I was chubby working at Hollister. You couldn't have okay. worked at Abercrombie. No, they so, only hired Hollister. So. They had like a documentary yeah. on Abercrombie and they were saying how to- And I've seen TikTok videos, everyone saying how toxic Hollister and Abercrombie was because you had to be so skinny to work there. No, I think well, that's more like just like an anti... Because it was mostly like white people. I think it was an, more like an anti... Like, you know, you can't uh, like be like 
promote like white people yeah and, and i think abercrombie is like white people stuff so that's why i i'm pretty sure that's why they yeah. canceled abercrombie yeah well zane was chubby so, and brown and he was rocking well he's it. on hollister yeah he wouldn't have made it you couldn't have made so it ever that, that was the thing like the big thing was like getting promoted to the abercrombie mm -hmm. in the mall and like people would be so hyped for it, They'd be like, can we fucking leave Hollister and go to Abercrombie? <laughs> and they were worse at Abercrombie. The like, same pay, uh, a little, just a little like more $2. prestigious. Maybe like two dollars more. Well, two's a lot. I mean, yeah. he's probably only paid like nine, right? Yeah. So two's like you know twenty percent more. So I started working at that place with my ex girlfriend. Like okay. we were like you we were had... dating, and we're like, let's get a job together. Yeah, <sighs> moving God, too quick. I'm the worst. Um, and then what happened? I mean, oh God, I wanted to break up with her for so long just because she was just, like, the worst. Like, she was, like, top, like, five, like, most, like, evil people I've ever met in my life. Like, I had, like, just anxiety, like, even when I wasn't with her. Did she Did gaslight she go to your you? School? What? She went to your school? She went to my school. Oh. Did she it, gaslight you? She would just gaslight me. She would just, I mean, I a whole saying bunch that. of things. Um, and so, like, I remember my last shift, like, one of my, like, uh... One of my coworkers got promoted to like an Abercrombie in like Garden State Plaza. Mm -hmm. And so like I'm going out with him like to celebrate his last day. <laughs> so and they bring like this other girl with us that works with us. And I'm like, I'm, we're like smoking a joint and like I'm in like the back seat. Mm -hmm. and I'm like having like a great day. And like it's like my anniversary with my ex girlfriend. And I'm like trying to make things right. I'm like, I want to break up with her like yesterday. And I was like, whatever like we can get through this i was like happy anniversary bay like we're gonna get through this together uh-huh and you till the end <laughs> and then like they like parked in the car and they're like zane we need to tell you something <laughs> oh i forgot to mention my best friend also worked at a hollister too okay and they're like yeah your best friend and your ex have been like fucking behind your back <gasps> and i was like oh. what are you still friends with him no you stopped being <sighs> friends with right then i mean i like spoke to him after because i wanted to hear the details but after that it's like well I did he give you the details again. they were both very vague with it uh, the worst is when you and then then you never talk to him though again uh i mean he like it's funny like he'll like i guess he found my instagram like he'll like swipe up on my stories would be like bro i see it's so cool that you're training jujitsu um bye yeah bye leave him on scene yeah oh my god yeah when something like that happens like you want like all the details are you that type of person I mean, I mean, because you just want to know, like, where it went wrong. Like, maybe there's something that I could have done better as a person. You know what I mean? I don't want that. To no, she's a hoe. But she, but she cheated on your best friend or with your best friend. That almost makes it worse, right? And he had yeah. a girlfriend, too. And so I call her up and, like, we're, like, in the car together, like, trying to figure everything oh, out. Oh, see, I still wouldn't have done that. I still wouldn't have told his girlfriend. Really? No, I wouldn't have. Really? I would, you should have just hooked up with her. Yeah, you should have done that. I don't think so. I was really fat. Like well, I you could that that I would have done, but I would never tell someone that their like husband cheated on them because that that's well, like white knight, okay well, white you, knight game. Well, you're also talking I about like that. marriage and like like a high school. No, I'm talking high even school, high school too. Yeah. I wouldn't I, like try to like tell like the girl be like just so you know, Zane's cheating on you because that's like i that's like white knight game yeah where you're trying to be like the good guy and like yeah uh, like... well me and her were friends before that though oh okay so it was like it wasn't like i was like hey like no i get why you did but yeah. i would yeah, i get it but you're the like if you found out someone was cheating would you or like that type of situation do you want like all the details or do you not want to know anything um maybe uh not all yeah probably not all details I've I had one time where I got cheated on so kind of a similar story. I was in college and I had just started dating this girl, like not even like dating, just like slowly hanging out, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, one night I, I was out and there was like a group of my friends <clears throat> and my cousin at the time was oh, there. This is a good story. So then um, I had to get back. I had like practice early in the morning, so I didn't stay out all night. So I told the girl, I was like, oh, come back when you come by my house when you leave the bar. Mm -hmm. And I went home that night and she woke up in the morning. She didn't come by. I was like, oh, fuck, that's weird. I called her. She didn't answer. You know, I called her a couple of times. Then I got in touch with her like after later in the day. And, you know, everything was fine. But my friends told me like, uh, whatever her name was Aaron Aaron went home <laughs> uh, with your cousin last night 
And I was like, really? I was like, that's weird. So then I, right away I asked him, I was like, yo, did you go home with her? He's like, yeah, I did, but nothing happened. She just slept over just because uh, she couldn't drive home. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, dude, I 100% do not care. I don't like this girl, not even a little bit. I just hooked up with her a few times. I was like, I don't care. Just tell me because I don't want to look stupid. I was like, just tell me. I definitely don't care. Like I emphasize it so many times. He's like, I swear to God, nothing happened. I swear to God. That's the worst. Yeah. So then I was like, all right, nothing happened. Then. You really believed him then? I did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then I, I mean, not, like, there's always, like, Yeah, some doubt. yeah. Then, like, years went by, like, two or three years went by, and somehow I found out from, like, one of her friends who I met, she's like, well, she fucked your cousin, and I never understood why you dated her after. I was like, wait, what? And she's like, oh. <laughs> so then I called him. It was like years later, like three years later. And I was like, yo, why didn't you ever tell me? I knew you did that night. Why didn't you just tell me? And he was like, oh, I, I didn't want to say anything. I was like, this was in 2006. We were best friends. Grew up together. He lived down the street from me. Grew up our whole life together. He's my first cousin. My dad's brother's son. Yeah. First cousin. Like brothers. Tr- trained together. Lifted weights all the time. Trained for football. He's a football t- teammate. Mm-hmm. As close as you get, closer than I am was to my brothers. Okay. That was in 2006. I've never spoken to him again. Oh my God. And that was like, now it seems like stupid. Like, because obviously I don't care about that girl Yeah, now. yeah. But at the time it's like, so you're yeah. like, oh, you betrayed me. And like, that's so messed yeah. up. You lied to me. And then like, yeah, you get older and you're like, whatever. Like, I mean, it's so stupid. But then yeah. so much time goes by that you're like, oh. I can't call now. How was your life? <laughs> <laughs> how, how was the rest of your life? <laughs> and at that time when you're like at that age, like so much in your life changes every year that you're like, oh well, now God. it's like one year. You're like, oh, I'm a totally, di-. you're like a totally right. different person every year. I mean, I feel like ever since then, like ever since I got you on, like I haven't had like a male best friend. Yeah. What about, what about me, Zane? You're, he doesn't want to be friends with us. Oh my you gotta God. You got to remember that. He's over us. You know, it's tough, right? Yeah, it's tough to. Yeah, I feel like male guys always fuck each other. Like male friends, like always, always fuck each other. Fuck each other. <laughs> no, I think I get that. I have with guys, like especially yeah. if they're like young. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about younger or older. Like I feel like any guy would hook up with their friend's girl like oh, i don't know about not that. any but all like more than half especially in like college age yeah, yeah i think sure. when you're young yeah when you're yeah. young yeah. yeah yeah i think anything like before marriage and stuff yeah probably mm-hmm. yeah interesting stuff uh- <laughs> <laughs> i think i wish we had a picture of like chubby zane with like a pink hollister polo I'm with sure a, with a collar popped do you want to see me in a singlet i've Have seen I that picture. i think i've seen this can we post we'll post this one in like you know what i mean you can do that right fit it in i probably can i have some more fat zane photos somewhere i'll, I'll show you guys uh ooh. But yeah, back to the thing where you want to know every details. I feel like that's a girl thing. Like girls like want to know every single thing. They want to talk to like the girl and find out. They want videos, pictures, everything. Like Mm. I feel like it's more of a oh my god, this picture of Zing. You have like a typical like Indian boy haircut. Whatever that haircut (laughs) is, is like I feel like when I did karate growing up, there was a lot of uh Indians that did karate. Dude, the bull cut was the shit. Yeah, and they all looked like that. Yeah, the girls want the nitty gritty details, right? Yeah, but no one really wants that, right? Like, no. But when it happens, you're getting all the information. Yeah, I kind of just want to know so I can like prevent things like that happening in the future. It's almost like I don't even think that's not. What I feel like I would want to know just to like almost like cut the wound even harder. I need to know everything, <laughs> just because I'm nosy too. Yeah. Not necessarily because I'm like, oh, what can I do to change differently? I'm like, no, I'm just nosy. Yeah, tough. Hopefully, you don't get cheated on again, Zane. Um, so the, there was UFC fights this weekend too. We'll kind of wrap up with that, but uh, really, there's nothing super exciting that happened. But the main event I thought was like super impressive. Uh, Rafi, how, was it Rafael or Rafael uh, Fiziev versus uh, Rafael dos Anjos? And um, Fiziev got the knockout at the end of the third round super impressive um but it's just interesting because like he wasn't even ranked like you know one or two fights ago Mm -hmm. but then he fought like some real challenging guys who also weren't ranked 
Now he beat, you know, gets a seventh ranked fight. And now you beat a seventh ranked guy. I think he's like one fight away from being in the talk for a title shot. Yes. He could definitely fight like AJ next now. Yeah. That's both strikers. Super exciting. Mm -hmm. Like that. That's pretty realistic. I, I think that could easily happen. Yeah. And then he would have a title shot. Pretty close. Right. Gagey doesn't have anything set up. It's just wild, though, how fast it goes. Because he was, four months ago, he wasn't in the top 10. Yeah. And now he's two fights away from a title shot. I, or one fight away. Yeah, I think, too, like, getting finishes are, are big. And kind of having exciting fights. That kind of makes up for, like, the rank of the person. Right. But, and I think, like, the rankings don't totally matter. Mm-hmm. Like, people know I think it being active is, matters a little bit more. Yeah. But who's legit, people know, and that gives them credibility to move well, up. That's how they get level level up. But this guy is not ranked in the top 10, and he could be fighting, you know, Gage yeah, like MSG or something in October, then early next year have a title shot. Yeah, that's like, I mean, there's plenty of examples of, of people like that, but that's kind of like the Toledo Santos in, mm-hmm. in my division. She didn't really, people, before she fought Valentina, they're like, Oh, she fought. Well, she had she did fight like one or maybe two girls in the top 10, like a little bit lower, but she had good finishes. And then like people knew like, oh, well, she's good. She yeah. she's next. You know what I mean? She was like someone that hasn't fought for it yet. And you know what I mean? Just because she didn't fight anyone like she you don't have to beat number three, two and one to get no. the champion. It doesn't really work like that. And I think people have a hard time understanding that. Yeah. But it, it's just so incredible to me, like how fast things can change. Yeah. You it's know? like so nobody big. knew who the, that guy's name last year, mm-hmm. and then you beat you know Rafael dos Anjos. You're in the a fight or two away. Yeah, it's and nobody knew him crazy. a year ago. It's crazy how fast things go. We were, we said this the other day. I'm like, I fought not even two months ago, and I feel like I'm like a washed up old fighter, and I'm like so out of the game. <laughs> that was so funny when we said that. Yeah, because we're, we're talking how some people like their whole identity is fighting, and they're like, oh, I fight, fight, and they you know don't really fight anymore or they retire and yeah and you always now you haven't fought in like six weeks yeah and you're like oh yeah i used to fight i feel like i'm like oh i can't even talk about it because it hasn't been like because you don't I, have anything i feel set. like i can only talk about being a fighter when i'm in camp and then two weeks after the fight that yeah. time between that time between two weeks after a fight and until you get another fight signed, I feel like I'm like I'm. I feel now like now you're just like like a posing business woman, Long Island mom, <laughs> Long Island dog mom, <laughs> Long Island dog mom, exactly <laughs> going on walks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feel yeah. like a loser. No, <laughs> no, but it is funny though because you instantly because that's a good thing though. That means it's not your like identity. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. But, you know, it's silly to say, like, I used to fight. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm a number one contender. Well, yeah, and you and fought, I just fought, you fought uh, like June 14th. May. May 14th. Yeah. Yeah. So less than two, I mean, two months. Two months. Yeah. Two months. Yeah. Pretty funny stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, you know, this weekend we had the UFC fights in Long oh. Island. Um, the whole squad gonna go. will the be whole there. Squad. We're going to have our Burning the Boat hats. I think that we should, at least me and Zane, wear some. At the fight? Yeah, I'm down, bro. Okay. You don't have to wear one. Why? Well, you can. Rub the I thought flag. maybe you'd want to just show off. Your, I look like, cute in a hat. Yeah, you do. Yeah. All right, so we're all going to well, wear I gotta, our hats. I got to see if it goes with the For thing. everyone listening, it was Kyle's birthday last week. Yeah, well, cancer yeah, we season. Yeah. Kyle. Oh, so sad. So um, we get every every year for Kyle's birthday, we get usually it's like just me and him, but we get him a birthday cake from this Italian bakery near us. And it's called a Casada cake. Are you familiar with a Casada cake? Is it open right now? The bakery the bakery. No. I would give you a slice, but we just finished it this afternoon. Are you familiar with a Casada cake? Uh, no, I feel There's like nothing no one... better. And it's funny because I, I was pretty sure what I knew with the ingredients. So I looked it up and you know how it's described. If you look it up, casada cake. Yeah, casada. You know what? How it's described? How is it described? A luxurious Sicilian cake. Just like Kyle. Just like Kyle. <laughs> Isn't that a nice description? Doesn't that sound good? A luxurious. I'm intrigued. Sicilian cake. Because we were like, yeah, oh. it's the best thing ever. It's like basically like a rum cake, but inside is cannoli cream. So it's like layered it's like with the like the best thing ever. Like um, like a vanilla cake, like soaked in 
like a rum, rum soaked in rum but not like too much not like as much as no, you, you know how you like a tiramisu it, yeah but you know how no not soaking wet no. no no you know how tiramisu is no. like soaked in in coffee or espresso but that's like almost wet or like a tres leches cake. yeah it's, it's not, not like that. that it's like still has the consistency of cake moist yeah and uh, layered a couple layers with a cannoli cream and then vanilla frosting. It is fire. And yeah, we've been trying to eat healthy, but that birthday cake does not count. Like yeah, like yesterday we were gonna eat like we had like leftovers like hamburgers and sausage and stuff. And I was like, I'm, I'm not eating the rolls. We'll throw them out like the bread. So we threw out any like bread stuff we had, or we had like some like fucking pasta salads and shit. So we threw all that out, but we kept our cake. I'm like, it, the cake's worth being fat. Oh, 100 percent. Like if you eat like like a fucking hamburger roll, it's not really worth the carbs. It depends if it's every right? once in a while. Like But a we, cassata cake is worth We had people over and fat. did like a cookout. So we had, you know, we did sausage and peppers and, and sliders. So we had the buns for that. So it's like, all right, if you certain every once in a while we'll do it, but I'm like, usually we do like we've been like gluten free for a while. And we're, Pretty much. Like obviously I'm not saying that because like, you know, oh I didn't have one of those rolls though. No, but I had, good. I like the pasta salad. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we'll get you, we'll get to that. When's your birthday? February 4th. Uh, Ugh, we should do fuck. it before then. Oh, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. When we get another one, we just eat a whole cake. When we get, no, well, it's not going to be a while. When we hit a thousand subscribers oh. on Instagram, we're going to get a casada cake. On Instagram? No. We're like 2000. You, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> what are we doing for 500? Yeah. Not a casada cake. Something big. Yeah. You did promise us when we got 500, we would do something big, and you have not delivered. We could on order that. Ralphs. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. See you next week.